Hello brothers and sisters, welcome to Rapture into Heaven or Flee into the Wilderness, Part 3. And as always, I want to give my disclaimer. Um, my faith is, I believe that Jesus Christ came down as God in the flesh, born of the Virgin Mary, through the Holy Spirit of God. I believe Jesus Christ walked the perfect walk on this earth, took in our sins, and was hung on the tree, the cross, and was killed for our sins. I believe he was dead three days and three nights, and then was resurrected by the Father. And then he presented himself before the Father as a sin offering for our sins, and he walked 40 days on the earth then he ascended up to the father to sit on the right hand of the throne comes back during his second coming that is my faith so that you may touch the spirits in what I believe because there are people out there saying that Jesus wasn't born of a virgin I mean a uh, wasn't born of the Holy Spirit but of Joseph there are people saying that they're forsaken the written word of God they are saying that Jesus wasn't God he was just a man so I have to disclose that Remember, always go with what's written in the word versus what you're hearing. No matter how much it makes sense to that person that's speaking to you. If it ain't lining up with what's written, get away from their teachings. All right, we're going to pick it up at Psalms 91, where we left off at. Talking about the secret place of the Most High. Where the woman flees into the wilderness, which you have a place prepared of God. Psalms 91. We're going to read down to 12. <clears throat> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So right here, the fowler is talking about his Satan. When Satan is cast down here at the beginning of the great tribulations, you will be delivered from the snare of the fowler because you're the woman who flees into the place of safety, prepared of God. You flee into the wilderness, into the mountains, where God will nourish you there for three and a half years. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flies by day. So if you are raptured into heaven, now, if you're looking at this, you're like, okay, since I'm still going to be on earth, here in the sick place of Mosiah, I'm going to see a lot of things. I'm still going to be here. So this is why you're going to be protected. But if you're in heaven, you wouldn't need this protection because you would be changed. And uh, according to what most of the preacher rapture group believes in um, you believe that you'll be at this banquet in heaven for seven years why would you need any type of protection if you're changed why would you see all these things if you're in heaven while this is going on this is how deceived we are as a people nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. You're going to be here seeing all this. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at the right hand. But it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes, here's a clue, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord my, which is my refuge, even the most high of thy habitation. There shall not evil befall thee. 
neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. It's not going to come near the wilderness, the place of safety where you're at. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So if you're changed, why would you need angels to protect you? Why would you worry about even getting hurt? Why would you need angels to keep you from dashing your foot against a stone? If you are changed, enjoying the banquet in heaven, having a jolly good time. Because you've been lied to. There is no seven year tribulation. It's three and a half years. You're not being raptured into heaven. You're supposed to go into the wilderness, a place of safety. And matter of factly, even those who get raptured at the end of the great tribulations, three and a half year tribulation, they're going to come back down and set foot on Mount Olive with Christ to set up the new kingdom to come after we kick Satan's butt and all those who took the mark of the beast. Then, guess what happens? Israel is brought back into the land by Jesus. And let's go to Ezekiel chapter 20. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 20. And we're going to read this. Ezekiel 20 and 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with the mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. It's talking about the physical descendants now. Now that the rapture has occurred at the last trump of God, at the end of the great tribulations, when Jesus come back and crack the sky, he called his saints up dead and alive and changes them. They set foot back on Mount Olive and, and uh, kicked Satan's butt. And all who took the mark of the beast. He's going to lure his physical descendants. Now Now it talks about his true physical descendants. The true Hebrew Israelites of God. This is the time when he's going to lure them. The true descendants of Israel. Not the ones that are in the, in the land. And divided God's land right now. They're going to be cast out and kicked. You know they, they're going to be... <coughs> As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and I will gather you out of the countries wherein you have scattered, where ye are scattered, with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. So the Lord is going to bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will he plead with you face to face. Just like he did the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. That's what this is saying. So the Lord is like doing a second exodus here. Let's read on. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. This is Ezekiel prophet. He's looking into the future here. And he was shown a vision of the future. And he wrote this down. That you may understand what will happen in the future. Only after the time of the Gentiles is over will Jesus Christ himself and I do mean him. Lure. He will bring with the mighty hand. The physical. The real true physical descendants. Which I've been trying to tell you about on this channel. Who the true descendants are. Who are waking up. As spoken of by Ezekiel 37. The dry bones are waking up. And we are starting to. See who we are as a people. But anyway. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So right here he's telling you. 
He's going to purge you out. He's going to bring you into that wilderness just like he brought um, Israel out of the land of Egypt into the wilderness. And this is how you know it was Jesus the whole time. Even back then as God. Do y'all y'all see it? This is Jesus as God. So it was always Jesus even back then. Remember in John, the beginning of John, it says that Jesus um let, let me just read it real quick. First I mean not first John, but Saint John. The Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. This was always Jesus, because He was the Word. The Word was God. It was always Jesus in the beginning. And Jesus is telling you right here. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness, so shall I plead with you again. Because Jesus is coming back again. A lot of people didn't know that either. See, that's the reason why Jesus said, No man have seen the Father but him who came down. That means every person who died in the past has not never went to heaven. They lie in the grave dormant until Jesus wakes them up or until the Father wakes everybody who died up in the last great judgment, the great white throne judgment in the end. After everything is done, then the Father is going to bring the final judgment upon everyone's head. Who did not partake in the first resurrection. So you want to literally make the first resurrection. Because uh, if you survive the great tribulations. Jesus is going to lure the physical descendants of Israel into the wilderness. And he's going to purge them out as he did the uh, ancient physical Israelites in the past. Before they can go into the land of Israel. Because he only wants those who are going to obey him. And there will still be rebels. And then shall is the physical Israelite descendants rule the land under Jesus and his saints. And they will rule over all the other nations. The Edomites, who's left. The Moabites, the Amorites. Japheth and the Hamites and the rest of Shem um, the Ishmaelites the Arabs the physical descendants of Israel will reign and rule with Christ during the thousand year millennium reign so you're going to have the spiritual Israel in Christ reigning in spirit with our new bodies and then you're going to have the physical true Hebrew Israelites who are indeed uh, the black people uh, according to what's written in scripture and the um, people of the true descendants of I mean the true people of North and South America who were here before the Europeans got here they are the physical descendants of Israel how do we know this? You have to read 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verses 40 through 45. It will tell you that the 10 so-called lost tribes of Israel traveled through the Euphrates River after the king was taken over, right, by the Assyrians. They could, you know, they talk with, they counsel with one another and then they end up getting on a boat probably quite a few boats and they traveled through west I mean east through the Euphrates River and traveled across the Pacific Ocean and it says it took them a year and a half to get there by boat it took them that long to get from 
the Pacific Ocean, I mean uh, from the Syrian Kingdom all the way to America because it said that they would go to a land where no one has been. So they were the first ones who discovered America. This is the reason why your precious Pope, if you still go to church on Sunday, that's your Pope. If you still honor and obeying his commandments, which is to leave the commandments of God alone, then you're that's your Pope. Your Pope took out the Apocrypha out of the original King James Version, the, the original 1611 King James Version, so you would never discover this information. So that you would always think that it was the Caucasian race who discovered America through Columbus and there was only savages here. No. These so-called savages were actual Israelites, children of color. And the original Mexicans, the Colombians, the Argentinians, the Brazilians, the um, North and South America, the Fiji Islands, um, the Hawaiian Islands. Um, all this is starting to come out. You have to do some research and homework. If you want to continue to trust the Pope and leave the Apocrypha out, you're not going to believe this. So you go ahead with yours. I'm going to go ahead with mine. I believe in what the Father, the Holy Bible and its original content. God said whoever take away from his book will be damned. And if you're following that damned person, you damned too. I choose not to follow the Pope. I include the Apocrypha as the Holy Scripture. And that's why I'm reading it. So that I can be blessed. And it's lining up with scripture. Second Ezra just means Ezra. Y'all know the book of Ezra that's in the King James Version? And in the, in the, all the other Bibles? Well, uh, Ezra just means Ezra. It's just other books that Ezra wrote. Anyway, go read it. And then read the Apocrypha. Come away from this uh, Roman European Christian brought system and come into the fold of Israelite. Okay, now we discussed that. Let's um, go over the last trumpet of God. A lot of you were led to believe that that trumpet is separate from the holy uh, from the trumpets. From the trump of God. Revelations chapter 8 and verse 2 going to prove to you who these trumpets belong to. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So here they are standing before the throne room of the Father. And the Father hands them these trumpets. The trumpets of God. Do you see the deception that's falling away from your eyes? Do you see the matrix of lies that got you believing all these different things? So now that we know this information, we can go back and read um, and believe that. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. No, 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Remember I told you everyone sleepeth until Jesus Christ either wake you up or you be woken by the Father in the great white throne judgment. That's the only time you're going to be awakened. No one man have seen the Father. No one ascends to heaven. Everything supposed to happen right here on earth. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So we will not go up before until after they go up. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, come from one another with these words. Okay, now that you know that, the, that this is saying with the trump of God. Which trumpet? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. No, let's start with 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, it's still the trumpet of God, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Brothers and sisters, when it says it's the last trump of God, it is talking about the last trumpet of God. Because look here in Revelation chapter 11, and verse 15 says, um, And the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So when that last trumpet blows, that last final plague poured out, Christ is going to crack that sky. The kingdoms are going to become his because he's going to come and put a lockdown on Satan and those who kept the mark of the beast, I mean took the mark of the beast and obeyed the beast. He's going to put an end to that. And they're going to die. But the beast and the false prophet is going to be thrown alive into the lake of fire and Satan and his his angels are going to be chained in the pit and then the thousand year reign of Christ will begin brothers and sisters and we who are changed are his saints with him in spirit going to reign and rule with him in spirit and then Christ is going to lure the physical true descendants back to Israel at that time so you've been lied to y'all that's not the real Israelites over there. They're not supposed to be there. Even the Caucasian Jews know that, that are here in America. They've been protesting against the Zionist Jews that are over there for a long time. Nobody would listen. Even they know Bible prophets. They know that Jesus himself was supposed to bring the Israelites back into the land of Israel. They know Bible prophecy, but you so deceived as Christians, you don't know nothing. You don't know the truth. Because you never identified yourself as Israel or with Israel or as an Israelite. This is the reason why. Now, now that you know the great escape and the catching away was put together by the enemy of your soul. Now that you understand what the Grecian people did and the Esau did, who you was believing all this time. Grecians and the Esau people who I don't know which one it was who put that thing together who put the put together the great escape and the catching away and said that it, this would happen and you would go into heaven you was never supposed to go into heaven everything supposed to happen here on earth that's why God himself the father himself is going to come down make a new heaven and earth and he's going to bring new Jerusalem down to earth and dwell amongst us on earth forever the new kingdom of heaven always was supposed to be on earth, starting with Jesus, ending with the Father. That is truth today, y'all, that you learn. And I pray that your eyes are open and awaken to this truth. Now let's get to, where is this place of safety? I know you've been waiting a long time, but I had to save for last so you can know, so you can follow through with the whole video series. Um, turn with me to cha Daniel chapter 11. And I encourage you to reread all these prophecies, starting with uh, Isaiah. Work your way all the way back to Malachi. Then go read Matthew chapter 24. Write this down. Then go read Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21. And also Mark. Um, Ooh, I forgot which one. Mark. Um, Mark chapter 13. 
well that's good enough and then after you finish that um, then you want to read Revelations but remember when you reread all these different books reread them with the knowledge who the physical Israelites are the true physical Israelites after you do your homework and research about this watch out who you listen to on here while you're doing this homework um, but uh, also if you understand that you're the spiritual Israelites you're in the body of Jesus Christ you know who you are keep that in mind when you're reading the prophecies now when it's talking about in the future after anything after Jesus Christ's death it's talking about the bride of Christ the woman who's going to be resurrected at the coming of Jesus Christ anything before that is talking about the physical descendants now after Jesus Christ comes back changes his uh, spiritual Israelite saints then it's talking about the physical Israelites the true descendants from that point on brothers and sisters so um, at the same time um, we need to take a look at um, oh we was going to Daniel chapter 11 wasn't we let's take a look at Daniel chapter 11 verse 41 now Daniel's looking to the future he's seeing the beast rising we've seen all this destruction and everything starting to take place he says he shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon now remember it's talking about the countries it's not talking about the people now, I did say the chief of the children of Ammon but I believe Ammon is still in this particular country that it's talking about now where is the uh, ancient land of Edom where is the ancient land of Moab? Where is the ancient land of Ammon? That's Jordan. Jordan. And the northern portion of Saudi Arabia. And they they had a couple, Caucasian couple, who just recently discovered what they call the mountain of God in the northern portion of Saudi Arabia. And they filmed this and they followed out and traced certain events of the Bible. Proven that that could indeed be Mount Sinai. Rather than that portion, that little V shaped piece of Egypt which is a wilderness where Moses and the Israelites went through and they, they said that that was Mount Sinai over there in that area and they crossed the Red Sea at that other portion so here's the thing this is the only country that escapes out of God's hands Jordan in the northern portion of Saudi Arabia But in the next verse it says, He shall stretch forth his hand. It's talking about the beast. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries. And the land of Egypt shall not escape. You see that? The land of Egypt is not going to escape. Had a slight interruption. But I had a chance to give a little testimony there. Um... Uh, just a brother who was walking by asking about the neighbor next door neighbor but anyway um, brothers and sisters there are brothers on here who are saying that the 
the peninsula in Egypt that V shape that is attached to Egypt is a part of I mean is the place of safety but right here it tells you that Egypt does not escape his hand but the land of Edom Moab and Ammon escapes his hand which is present day Jordan now parts of Edom is in still in Jordan but some of Edom is still in Saudi Arabia so we have to be careful with this one here and I know the Lord has woken me up for a purpose and he's showing me where to go He's showing me the place of safety in the wilderness. And I'm choosing to believe that it is Jordan. Because it is the only place that this Bible speaks of that escapes the hand of the beast. It is the only place. You see, Satan already got China, Russia, Western, you know, the, the Western world. Uh, Africa, Australia, you know, he's stretched, he, he's taken over uh, the globe. And when he comes, he's going to really put them all together, except for um, this, this, this here, Jordan. So, if you got questions, nice comments. Please post them in the description box below. I mean in the comment section. But if you got some negative issues. Or you you got some problem with me. Do as Matthew's. I mean as Jesus says in Matthew's chapter 18. Verse 15 through 20. Say go to your brother in private. That means to either email me. Through my website. Which is in the description box below. Or inbox me. In private. You have those options. And maybe we can get together and talk about this, either through Skype or phone or or just through the email. I can just answer you there. Um, but in any way, any case, you have heard the truth here. And there still is a, a small bit of a debate on, is it the Sinai Peninsula, that little V-shape that is still in Egypt, or is it the portion? Is it Jordan and the northern part of Saudi Arabia? That there is still, I'm still not concrete, but I'm kind of leaning toward Jordan mostly, y'all. That's where I'm at. So, uh, the Lord will lead us into that place at the right moment they got people already uh, preparing themselves they're leaving already when the Lord himself said he would give you the wings of an eagle to get you to this place he would do it he would provide the way when the time comes you will be able to leave whatever country you are in and the Lord will make a way that you will get there. No matter what. He's going to make a way for you. If you are chosen to go. If you are found worthy to escape all the things on this earth. And go into the wilderness. The wilderness the place of safety. And escape the hand of the beast. The hand of Lucifer. And the judgment of God. To try and test. Um, the saints who do not make it. And bring more saints into the fold during that time so keep all this in mind and please favorite this video all three hit the like button on all three even if you got to go back hit the like button and share these videos it helps people wake up and one more small disclaimer for those who are still making a big huge issue about uh, what physical color Jesus is and the physical color of the 
Hebrew Israelites, I'm going to simply say this. It's a part of the word of God and it should be important to you. You should want to know this portion of the written word of God. Because his saints know who he is. We're not talking about in the body of Christ where the color of Jesus matters. It doesn't matter there. We're talking about the outside body of Jesus Christ, which was given a description in the Holy Word of God. And if the Holy Word of God is truth and no word will come back void, then you should respect and honor the Word of God that mentions his color and his race, where he come from. You should respect the Word of God as his saints, but only his true saints will. Everybody else will blast them, blast anybody who talks about Jesus Christ's color and his hair texture and the Israelites being black everybody else is going to do that but his true saints are the only ones that are going to accept this because it's written they are the true saints who believe in the written word of God and they will stand by it these are the true saints that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ which is his written word and remember Jesus Christ was the word made flesh in his description he had to come in that same description am I right brothers and sisters he could not come in any other form than the written description of him or the um, word of God would have been a lie but I tell you he was a lie the devil is a liar the devil brought forth his image from his people the people of the prince the Grecian people and Esau Esau people and all the other nations who go right along with this with all the lies and all their gods. That's it. That's the people of the prince. Now if you come out of. Edom and the Grecian people. And you are in the body of Christ. If you come out of. The physical Israelite descendants. And uh, the Hamites. If you come out of them. And you are in the body of Christ. None of that matters no more. Because you put on Christ. You become what Christ is. You're going to get a body like Christ. And Christ was seen in the future as being a black man with woolly hair sitting on the throne. So I don't know if everybody's going to change it to all these little black men. <laughs> I'm not sure. We, they say we get a body like Christ. You, it says that you're neither male or female in Galatians 3 and uh, chapter 26 through uh, 29 the reason that being is because you become God with Christ your identity changes this is the reason why and I say the best for last everybody who's in the body of Christ get the same body as Christ become God with Christ you are no longer male or female you're no longer Jew or Gentile for we are one in Christ we are with Christ We Christ is God we're going to be God with him. We're going to inherit the kingdoms. We're going to inherit the earth. And the universe. The universes or whatever else God has prepared for us. In the future. We are going to be. As. Jesus Christ is. But forget about being like the most high. Then you get into Satan territory. Because Satan says he wants to be like the most high and ascend above the throne of God. You see what I'm saying? But you will be under Jesus, still as him, with him, and inherit with him the promises of God to Jesus, to us. I pray I explained that okay, uh, but... Anyway, y'all have a blessed day, night, and may the grace and peace of God rest upon you. And I pray this, this video series awakens you to the truth that you will not be raptured into heaven, pre-trib raptured into heaven before the great tribulations. You will not be mid-trib raptured into heaven during the great tribulations. And you will not be post-trib raptured into heaven after the great tribulations. You will go to the wilderness, the place of safety, before the great tribulations. And then at the end of the great tribulations, you will be caught up in the air and changed 
to be with the Lord forever as his saints those who are dead and those who are alive and then the physical descendants shall be drawn back into the land of their forefathers and they shall rule over all the nations from that point on with the hand of Christ Shalom